So I started on this video a while ago, but got sidetracked by school and other things. But the other day on Twitter, I saw this post and I replied to it. After posting my reply, I figured I should finish this video because the reasons I love this mission cannot be explained in just one tweet. So then, what is mission 43? Shining lights, even in death. There will be major spoilers for other parts of the game, by the way, so, uh, yeah, don't watch this if you want to play the game yourself. So first, I'll start with one aspect that I believe is essential to fully appreciating the mission, which is that you are playing as Venom Snake. I know that may sound fucking stupid, as obviously you play as Venom when you play as in the whole game, but I'll try to explain. Throughout the game, you make a few different decisions that impact the other characters around you, and these range from major decisions such as choosing to save or kill Quiet in Mission 11, and whether to kill Skullface or let him die slowly, although that one doesn't really matter. So the choice of killing Skullface or letting him slowly die is something I want to talk about real quick. There is not a correct in-character choice or a better ending or anything like that. With how nuanced Venom generally is in this game when it comes to killing or not, it's entirely within his character to do either, so the only reasons for killing or not killing him are entirely personal to you. Do you shoot him for everything he did, or has he suffered enough? Do you shoot him because he asked you to, or do you let him slowly die because you hate him that much? What you pick ultimately does not matter, as he dies right there anyway. But the game gives you the choice because it is important that you are playing during these events rather than you just watching Venom Snake do everything without any input. This allows you to connect with the events happening more than you would if you just watched Venom do anything. So, why is it important that you're controlling Venom as opposed to just watching him during this mission? Well, if you've played Metal Gear Solid 5, you know that throughout the game you can choose to either sneak past soldiers, non-lethally deal with them, kill them, or extract them and recruit them. These soldiers will then become part of your mother base staff, which means that you can send them out on missions and see them walking around base. These soldiers have dedicated their lives to serving you until their death. They even just let you beat their asses and will thank you for it because you're big boss, you're the best soldier in the world that only wants the best for them. You build your army by kidnapping these soldiers, but hey, they end up enjoying it and grow to respect no one as much as they respect you. And then the first outbreak happens. During this first outbreak, you have to manually choose who to quarantine or else your soldiers will continue to die from the disease. This does actually kill your soldiers, so you have to act fast or you'll lose some with good stats. Eventually, you make the cure, everything sorts itself out, and all is well that ends well. And then the second outbreak happens. This second outbreak comes out of nowhere. One second, you've cured everyone that lived from the first outbreak and you get to continue on with the main story and then BAM, another one. Venom decides to check it out himself and he finds his soldiers suffering from the disease in a zombie-like state. With the first outbreak, almost everything was happening in the background. You just quarantine your soldiers and move on. Yeah, they would actually die, which sucked, but that was mainly because it meant your mother base stats were lower. However, with this one, you see firsthand how your soldiers are suffering. After making your way up in the building and witnessing your suffering soldiers, the game takes control of Venom away from you. The infected soldiers are trying to escape, which will endanger the entire base, and they try to stop Venom from preventing them from leaving. Before this point, there's still a chance of a cure in the back of both your and Venom's minds, as the first outbreak had one. When the game takes control from you at this point, it's because it knows that you will probably try to CQC or non-lethally take them down, but you can't. The soldiers cannot get out or else the whole base will become infected and Venom waits until he has absolutely no choice but to kill them. We know that Venom loves his soldiers and he would not kill them unless he absolutely had to and then we see him do just that. Right after witnessing this, the game gives control back to you and says you have no other choice. These soldiers are in a zombie-like state though. They stumble around, make some weird grunts, and appear to be generally mindless, just like in the intro, which makes it awfully convenient for you as they're basically not your men anymore, so why should you feel bad? Except, no. When you make your way back down, you're not greeted with a bunch of zombies. You are greeted with a bunch of your men still suffering, still conscious. They still react to you. They beg for your help or beg for you to kill them, saying that there is no one they would rather die to than you. Some of them will see you aiming at them and then start shooting back because they don't want to die. A group of paranoid men lock themselves in a room, unsure of what to do until you show up. They all agree to let you, Big Boss, decide what to do. You have no other option besides shooting them here. And none of them put up a fight or beg for help. They are all willing to die by your hand and even give you a final salute as a sign of respect. 
That room has one survivor that's not infected, and you carry him out, but before opening the door, he tells you that he's probably infected. And yeah, when you look with the goggles, he is. He calmly sits down on the floor, and he asks you to kill him. And you do. You are forced to kill all of these soldiers. Not in the way that the game literally makes you, but in the way that there is no other option. And the worst part? Those soldiers are there because of you. You extracted and recruited those soldiers in the quarantine building, and they were promised the best life they could have asked for. Some of them even volunteered as the Diamond Dogs is known for being a promising place for soldiers that want good lives. And yet, after recruiting them to join the Diamond Dogs both directly and indirectly, you kill them. You, the player, aim at them and pull the trigger. You are the one that extracted them to the base. And that is something that just sticks with me. These soldiers would not have died if they didn't end up believing in your cause. Whether that be because you kidnapped them or because they volunteered because they already believed in the dream. Throughout the entire mission, I felt horrible for executing my soldiers that were there, suffering because I kidnapped them. I felt like a monster. I cannot stress enough how important it is that you, the player, are the one killing the soldiers. Now I know not too long ago I went on a whole tangent that the game has some decisions that you make throughout, but there is one I kind of glossed over, and that is deciding whether to be lethal or non-lethal while playing missions. Non-lethal for the majority of enemies is the path the other characters want you to follow and the game heavily pushes you towards, but you don't have to. If you want, you can kill everyone you come across. However, by doing this, you gain demon points and the shrapnel in your head will slowly start to grow until it's a huge horn and you're covered in permanent blood as if you have become a demon. After Venom has finished killing everyone inside the quarantine zone, he sees himself as Demon Snake regardless of if you were Demon Snake beforehand and he falls to his knees. This is such a powerful moment. We know exactly what is going on through Venom's head when we see that brief appearance of Demon Snake. He sees himself as a monster for killing his own men, his family, his diamond dogs. But I think there's something else going on here too. I think this moment is foreshadowing the mirror cutscene. Real quick, I fucking love this scene. One of the best cutscenes in any video game ever if you ask me. Anyways, Venom learns the truth about his identity, accepts his new role with a smile, time skips, and then he approaches the mirror again only to see the monster he's become in the mirror before smashing it, which reverts to his physical self and he walks away. I guess to his fatal encounter with Solid, I don't know. Venom sees himself as a demon due to everything he's done and everyone he's lost, but he carries on to continue the big boss legend. The moment in the mission and the mirror scene both have Venom make the same choice. In the mission, Venom is there in the moment thinking about what just happened and what led to the situation. In the mirror scene, Venom is reflecting on everything he's ever done. In both instances, he makes the choice to keep going. Even if he sees himself as a monster, he still believes in the big boss legend. If you thought that personally killing your own soldiers or peeking into Venom's inner psyche and seeing how much he hates himself was a punch in the gut, man, the ending cutscene of this mission is just a kick while you're down. All of the soldiers you kill are cremated, and just as Venom is about to put their ashes into the sea, Bitch Boy here yells that those you killed were family. Venom agrees, and decides that the best way to honor the Fallen is not to throw their ashes to the Heartless Sea, but to turn them into diamonds to be placed on their brothers and sisters in arms. That way, they will continue to remain with their fellow Diamond Dogs even after death. After this moment, Venom will have a diamond by the logo on his uniform. I can't even begin to describe how beautiful this scene is. Venom does not have the bodies turned into diamonds for himself. He doesn't have it done for the living Diamond Dogs either. He does it as a sign of respect to those that he had to put out of their misery. He does it as a way to physically showcase that they will always be present in the hearts and minds of their fellow Diamond Dogs. So lastly, I want to real quick talk about how this mission ties into a big theme of Metal Gear Solid 5. Identity. Skullface wanting to get revenge for his identity being stolen by foreigners, Eli struggling to figure out who he is in the world and what Big Boss is to him, Venom losing his original identity and being given the new one of Big Boss's phantom while Big Boss steals his and fucks off in the shadows. All of these are important parts of the game connected by the theme of identity. Shining Lights, even in death, also plays into this theme. There's the obvious of Venom seeing himself as Demon Snake in the mission, but there's also the collective identity of the soldiers. They all identify themselves as diamond dogs loyal to big boss even when they try to shoot you before you kill them it's not because they hate you they're just scared and panicking most of them just accept their fate or ask you to kill them they are diamond dogs and they accepted that identity 
Skullface's original language was taken from him, but he chose the identity of a psycho out for revenge. Venom's past life was completely ripped away from him, but he chose to accept his new identity as Big Boss. The soldiers were originally kidnapped and chose to accept the identity of being a diamond dog, or they volunteered for this new identity. Your identity is something that you choose, even if it doesn't seem like it. So I've hit a thousand subscribers. I know that's not a lot, but I just want to say thank you all so much. I don't know why anyone would listen to my dumbass voice spout off nonsense, but I greatly appreciate it and I'll definitely start uploading more. I know my videos don't do well for the most part, but they provide me with an outlet to talk about things I like, and if I'm lucky, I get to see what you guys have to say too. So uh, yeah, that's all I wanted to say. I have a Twitter, so if you want to see some more hot takes of mine or whatever, you can go follow that. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.